I feel as though my anxiety is of the fuck you variety. With its unflagging energy, ceaseless and proud of that fact, it leaves a mammoth weight on my chest. And as consequence, my heart pounds at the door. And it isn't the polite knock that most people feel on their ribs. It's the sound of your frustrated neighbor's fists slamming at 3 a.m. because you haven't toned the party down. My anxiety is invincibly ignorant to its noise. It is physically nauseating and intentionally so. It is the grip of a claw machine leaving you gasping for air, dizzying and headache inducing like the stages of a crucifixion. Anxiety is the person at the party that corners you and forces you to listen to the same story over and over and over again at a volume so loud you can't even hear the words. It's deafening, and even peacocks these facts with a pride that would make narcissists blush. You know the feeling. That same feeling you feel when you trip, in between hitting the pavement and the actual misstep. When you could see the ground coming towards you and all you can do is close your eyes and brace for it. But the fall never comes. Instead, you're stuck in a weird limbo bracing for something you can't even see. Is it uncloaked honesty or mean-spiritedness? And panic is like ricocheting between treading through the trough of water and a dead man's float. I clench my jaws until my teeth are chipped fine china left jagged in my mouth, and anthurium drenches my chin. Agoraphobia becomes the witch you forgot to burn. It becomes the consumer of ambitions and the asymmetry between autonomy and unhinged insanity. You swallow this torment, but keep the shards in your belly. At what point does your body become a bullseye, using it as target practice? The rocky ledges of scars border your body, but we all prefer happy endings. So we work backwards until we find one, and work to let what lies within us be a thing that cannot be colonized, warped, or contorted. 